I want to show. <coughs> excuse me, I've got a bit of a cough. I want to show some examples of how subtle the notions of limits and continuity and differentiability can be in two dimensions. Um, we're not going to do a lot with the technical definitions and proofs or anything of continuity, but I want to show you the basic ideas and what's different about this from one dimension. For a function of one variable, it's in, if you see a graph of a function of one variable, it's usually pretty easy to tell if there's a discontinuity. But functions of two variables have some properties that can be confusing and, and downright misleading if you're not careful with them. So I want to look at a f an example first. The function is xy over x squared plus y squared. And you'll notice that you can't literally put 0 into this function. Um, so let's go ahead and define this to be 0 at 0, just specially. And then I want to see what uh, properties is, does this have? Is it continuous? Does it have, w what, what can we say about limits? And, and what does the graph look like? And the first thing is that if you plug in x equals 0 into this expression, and as long as y is a non-zero number, then the numerator will be 0, the denominator will not be 0, and you're good. And if x and y are both 0, we've go ahead, went ahead and offic artificially defined it to be 0 there. And so on, on the entire y-axis, when x is 0, this is 0. And similarly, if uh, y is 0, on the entire x-axis, this function is 0. And so in particular, the limit, let me go down, oh yeah, I can't do that. Let me go down um, here, direct your attention out of here. Let's ask, does the limit as x and y go to 0, 0, the origin of, of this function exist? And observe that the function, that the limit as x goes to 0, if you set y equal to 0, you're on the x-axis, and then you take the limit just to the x variable, yeah, that does exist, because it's just always 0. And similarly in the other axis, you can't see that quite yet, because I've got this hiding over here. Let's see what the, what the graph of this function looks like, though. This function is not what you call a nice function. And let's see what happens. If you look along an axis, if you just concentrate right on the axis, yeah, it's just 0 along that entire axis. That's why we can sort of look along it. And it's 0 along this entire axis as well. Along both the x and y axes, it's 0. But let's look at hap what happens near the origin. And in particular, what would happen if we approached this, the origin from a different direction? Those two limits that I showed you before are a little bit misleading, because it says, OK, if I approach along either axis, it seems to have a perfectly nice limit. The limit is 0. The function seems to be continuous. But that's not good enough. And let's think about what would happen if we approached along, say, the line like up here at the blue. This is the line y equals x. When y equals x, let's see what happens. Let me move this over a second. There's a little tiny copy here anyway. If y equals x, then this is x squared over 2x squared. I just get 1 half. And so this ridge here is, has a constant height of 1 half. So if I approach the origin along that line, then I keep getting these values 1 half until right at the end, when I'm actually at the origin, I decided to define it to be 0, and it suddenly drops. So that's, it's not continuous along that line. So it's definitely not going to be a continuous function. And that's one way to test uh, if your function is continuous. Go, try and go at it from all directions. Now let me just give you, you know, very briefly, the, the real definition of continuity. The real definition is that no matter what direction I'm coming in, and no matter how weird a pattern I'm coming in, not just on a straight line, like if I'm spiraling in, in terms of my x and y values, no matter how strangely I come in, it, as I get closer to a point, I should get closer to the value. The, the, uh, the function values should get closer to the function values for that point. And in particular, if I come in along some straight line or even some curve, I should be coming in, the, the function values should be getting closer and closer to the desired, desired value. So that in particular means that the value they approach shouldn't depend on the, the line I come in on. But here, as you look, if you focus as you turn on where it seems to kind of crease down to nothing, if I come in along that line that's right towards the viewer right now, I'm going to end up with that value. That's like minus 0.3. And here it's like 0 0.4. Along this line, we already saw it's, one, it's plus 0.5. Along the valley, it's minus 0.5. So this is just a, a crazy function in terms of continuity. It's horribly discontinuous at the origin. But we wouldn't have seen that if we had just uh, evaluated it just on the axes, where the function is just 0.
Um, now, let's look at a somewhat a slightly different function and um, give you another thing that can go wrong. If you take the square root, uh, let me just change that in here actually. If you take the square root here, it turns out to be not as nasty a function. This is now a continuous function. Let me bring this window over. Eh, that didn't work. Uh, let me close it and then bring it back for real. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. This is a continuous function because as um, the only place it could possibly screw up is at the origin because that that square root of that, that x squared plus y squared in the denominator is still there. It's now square rooted. Um, and so we have to be careful when it's coming when you're coming into the origin. But it turns out that this really is actually continuous. To prove that is probably more than we want to do. But you can see from the graph that no matter what I do as I walk toward the origin, the values get closer and closer to zero. But let's think about whether this should be differentiable at the origin. Well, the only kind of differentiability we've discussed so far is partial derivatives, but that's not at all the whole story. The partial derivatives are really special because they say, what happens if I just go along one axis? Here, if I go along this axis pointing towards us, it looks like the function zero. Here again, it looks like the function zero. Well, that makes sense. It's the same kind of formula. It's still true that if I am, go am not at the origin and I set x or y separately to be zero, I get zero out of this guy. So what does that mean about the partial derivatives? It means that the partial derivatives of this thing are go both going to be zero. And let's think about what uh, we've, we've mentioned a little bit. We haven't done a lot of calculation with it. <coughs> but we mentioned a little bit about what the, we think that means for the tangent plane. And let me just take a quick break here. OK, I seem to have three minutes left. What we've got here is that the function, if I look at the partial derivative with respect to x at the origin, that means let x be a variable and let y be constant, just like I was doing here. And then take the derivative. Well, because those values are all 0, I get 0. And I get 0 for the partial derivative. But does this graph have a nice tangent plane at the origin? Well, I don't think so. Let's look back, look back at this graph. Spin it around. OK. Look at that v shape. That's something that looks a whole lot like an absolute value. Look at this v-shape down here. That looks like a negative absolute value. There's some sharp corner behavior here at the origin that's suggesting that we would be really mistaken to say that this has a tangent plane at the origin. And one way to really be sure of that is to think about what a tangent plane should do. It should say if we zoom in, now I'm getting to the resolution of the, the screen here, but if we zoom in, then the tangent plane should be a really, really good approximation to this, to this function near the origin. And at worst, it should be, you know, it should be tangent in sort of all ways. It should just be barely touching. And the, cur the, the function can curve away from it, but it can't actually just leap out straight off in a different direction. And that's what would happen. If we said the tangent plane, the only tangent plane we could possibly attach to this guy would be the xy plane, because those der partial derivatives being zero. Um, and that's just not going to make sense because the tangent direction here is not even close to flat. The tangent direction here is not close to flat. The tangent direction here, whoops, here and here is not close to flat. So this is a good example of a function where the partial derivatives exist, they're equal to zero, but this function is not differentiable in the strong sense, the sense we'd really like it to be. And we're going to have to investigate that at least a little more to understand what the real condition is for differentiability. That's a good point.